Well, hey y'all, happy Monday. Well, I hope you're having a fabulous Monday and that you're finding some way to stay cool. Last night, we got a torrential windstorm come through and we just thought for sure that that was gonna be our big <laughs> one-time monsoon rain, but um, we've yet to see any type of monsoon activity besides that. So it was one of those unfortunate things where it just makes a huge mess in the yard and runs you out of the pool but it doesn't produce any rain, so we still had to water last night. So, in today's video, as you may have noticed from the title, I've gotten my hands on a publication from the cooperative site. I found this in my Facebook group. Um, but it's an awesome little document that cues us into common insects that we see on a monthly basis here in the low desert in Arizona. So we're gonna take a little tour of the garden. I'm gonna show you what my indoor setup looks like um, because I've got that all set up. And um, so first things first, we're gonna check out the tour. I'm gonna show you my indoor setup. And then lastly, I'm gonna chat with you about the bugs that you'll be seeing um, here in the last days of this hot, hot August and the bugs that you could see here in, a, in and about your home in September in the low desert. So let's go check out the tour. Well, I planted several things underneath the tree. Um, the one thing that survived is this. It looks like it's a pumpkin. So I'm thrilled to see what happens with that. My little kitty pool of three sisters is doing pretty good. We got a bunch of wind last night. So that's why the corn looks a little wind blown and I'm gonna go in this week and tuck a bunch of beans in the middle of all this so that it can climb up the corn and the okra is doing its best I gave it some fertilizer this week and so it's starting to put out another round of flower crowns so I'm excited about that um, this kiddie pool for some reason lost all of its seedlings um, but it's starting to vine out with these vines and as we as the next if we can get through the next couple weeks Then I think this will just start getting covered up with flowers. I went in and I filled up all the bags um, With my soil mix which is Mel's mix up to the rims and I took out most of the tomatoes that weren't performing this one right here was part of a plant that was here and it looked real happy so i decided to let it be for a little while but now all of these bags are ready for new plants in them and i did keep this one because i let my husband pick and he so he wanted to keep this one right here and for the most part it does look pretty happy um just a little bit of death down there now these are my beautiful babies that I've been updating you and showing you every week and you can see a lot of the cups are almost to the top and today's the day that they get another fish emulsion infusion so they're gonna be super happy about that and um, this group right here was the second group that I did and so they're not coming along as fast maybe if I went in and added some soil but between this tray of tomatoes and that tray of tomatoes, I think I'm okay as far as tomatoes go. I cleaned out everything that was dying here on the bale. This is a part of a butternut that for the most part, the whole plant was gone and dying, but this part looked great. And this is another squash that the rest of the plant looked bad, but it looked great. And then when I had a bunch of tomato seedlings, I tucked in some over here just for the fun of it. And that one's doing actually pretty nicely. So I, every day I'm continuing to get the bell just a little bit wet. And um, I'm about to plant beans in it because beans are about a 60 day crop. And then after that, I'll see um, if I'm gonna combine these bells or what I'm gonna do next with them. But I just wanted to show you what the bells look like now. Um, they're super short in some places. Like if I come around this way, you can see that they, there was a major <laughs> decline down here on this edge of the bell. Um, 
but that's how they look. The sweet potatoes are just like a jungle in here and we're so thrilled about that. So they're happy in the shade and all the new babies took off really great. So there's a little look at the sweet potatoes. This crazy gob has gotten a little bit better with this shade cloth, but it's still kind of hard to see what's good and what's not. And those bags down there need to be topped off. The loofah is looking just about the same right here and over there. Um, I did get some winter squash planted in these bags. So there's a couple coming in there. And over here, I've got some more seedlings coming in here. So hopefully soon with the shift in the sun, we'll see some fun stuff come out of these bags over here. So there's our little tour. Okay, so I, as a part of kind of getting, um, you know, like our classroom set up for home learning this year, I also have got my grow station set up. So you know, if you remember, I already had these two lights. Um, I was kind of working on a six foot table, but I'm following the lead of my friends, the Naked Gardeners. Um, they use these same shelves. They're like 40 inches, 48 inches wide. Um, perfect size for the lights that and I've made a video on the lights um, But and then these are my awesome grow trays. I've got obviously the rest of them are outside right now um, But I'm pumped about this setup because I could either have um, Two lights underneath this shelf or I could have one light um, And you know, I've also got some light coming here from the window So we're super thrilled and I'm excited to show that to you and um, I think the first thing I'm going to get going on this shelf is actually going to be um, my Brussels sprouts because I've got this project that I'm going to do an experiment with Brussels sprouts. So that's probably the first thing that you're going to see. But I did just want to show you what my seedling setup for the winter looks like and what it's going to be like. So there you go. Now, the most important thing to know about this publication is that it's not elaborate by any means. It's literally like a scroll down through the months, and I totally wish that it had way more pictures in it. But I still think that, especially if you're new to gardening, um, or if you're somebody like me who's been doing it for a while, it kind of will give you a little of a head start on what to be looking for in your garden. So just some little, I'm gonna hit some high points for August. So we know that August brings in a lot of dust storms, but what you might not have known is that those dust storms are actually what brings in a lot of the spider mites. So this is the time of the year on my tomato plants where sometimes I see some small webbing. So the easiest way that I've always handled with that was just to give them a good spray off. Um, but there's also some things in here, um, and that's what this the simplest solution that this recommends is to use the hose to. But that's another good thing about this page is it does have some good little tips about how to manage these things from kind of a non-pesticide um, perspective. So also in August you're going to see the green fig beetle. Um, in yards you might see some brown ticks. Now the entire time I've lived in Arizona I've never known nothing about no ticks being in no yards here and it kind of makes me cringe to even think or know that there are because I, saw, I thought that was something I left in Arkansas. But in addition to that, we've also, and you probably have been experiencing this, is the Indian house crickets and the cockroaches. Now, my husband loves to be very specific about cockroaches because what you're really seeing this time of the year are what he calls water bugs. Um, they're not the small German roaches that we kind of associate with having a roach infestation. Um, then we also kind of start to see at the end of August um, the white flies begin to build up. And then the last thing that it mentions are um, big-eyed bugs which are like a rice grain size bug and um, they are efficient predators of the insects that feed on moth eggs small caterpillars and even white flies so that's another reason why we kind of want to be a little 
delicate when it comes to just going out and wildly spraying pesticides and that's definitely why we kind of stay back from that in our garden because nine times out of ten you'll see the predators show up to take care of whatever is bothering your plants now just to run through um, the things that you're gonna see coming up in September September is the month for the caterpillar migration so army worms salt marsh caterpillars white line sphinx caterpillars those are gonna reach high high numbers um, they'll get so high numbers apparently you can actually see them crawling across the road so if you've got some things that would be attracted to those you might consider using something like some tool to cover up your plants a little bit to keep those happy little moths from laying their little babies which turn into these voracious caterpillars so this month you're also going to see the darkling beetles and and that's in september mind you i'm talking about but i think we're already seeing some of those and the girls have tried to take one as a pet so i'll have to let you know how that goes for them them. Also, this is where we're going to see in September high numbers of the white flies. So there are some recommendations that maybe kind of back away from um, planting some of the more tender fall crops until after the temperatures start to come down. But fortunately, I've checked for us and September is just going to be a dream come true as we see ourselves start to back out of those super high triple digits and we're going to see more and more days that are in the 90 degrees and finally start to see the evening temperatures begin to cool off for us. Now, the last thing besides the white flies are long-legged flies. And these are a metallic green fly that you'll see just kind of sitting upon leaves. Now again, these are friendly fly flies. These are the ones that are going to be feeding on small insects like leaf hoppers. And they also take care of robber flies and the little larvae of the white flies. So I'm going to put this link down below and I definitely recommend saving this link on your desktop so that every month you can make a quick reference back to be aware of what's coming into the garden and also being aware of what your beneficial insects are so that as time goes on you give them a little bit more of a chance than just using that ch -ch to get rid of anything that's going on in your yard so that's our little exciting news about the common bugs that you can see in Arizona. I hope you check out that link. And um, ultimately, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Sweat's getting to me out here. A little humid. We're hoping for some rain today. But otherwise, I hope you have the best day ever. And thank you so much for tuning in with us this week. And otherwise, just have a good one, y'all.